Right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. Today we're back for part 6 of 27 year old Brandon and his 26 year old Russian fiancé Julia. So last time out we looked at a tense few days that left the couple's relationship on the rocks. With Brandon showing little interest in Julia's wedding dress and the church they planned to get married in, Julia began questioning his commitment to the wedding. When she confronted him about it, rather than reassuring her, he got all defensive and started gaslighting her, leaving Julia wondering if he was the right man for her after all. But before she had time to make a decision about anything, their relationship was then put under even more pressure. The immigration system was being disrupted as a result of the pandemic, and Julia was told that if they were a few more months to get married, there was a chance that her green card application may be denied. So despite their doubts, the pair decided to get married as soon as possible to ensure Julia's chances of being allowed to remain in the US. Today we're going to look at the couple's wedding from the final episode of season 8 of 90 Day Fiancé. But before we get to that, Brandon wants to have a serious talk with Julia. With the news that they had to get married so quickly sweeping a lot of their problems under the rug and the couple having yet another big fight the night before, Brandon wants to know how Julia is feeling about their relationship and whether she's still certain she wants to marry him. So I kind of wanted to just get inside your head See how you're feeling. And uh, marry does not mean we're not divorced after if we have more problem in that case. Are you threatening with divorce before you even gotten married? I try to say what happened if you you not if we not stop not hear that's, each that's, other. That's a kind of a threat. It definitely is a threat, but it's just classic Brandon to get defensive over the fact that there's criticism coming his way, rather than thinking about what she's saying and why. I mean, it would have been a weird thing for Julia to say had their relationship been going swimmingly, but it hasn't, has it? She definitely just wants Brandon to realise that them getting married isn't going to paper over their cracks, and if he thinks that he can go back to not putting any effort in because he's tied her down, then he can think again. I think she's realised that her being this brutally honest is literally the only way she'll be able to get through to his emotionally challenged brain. And I kind of rate her for it. You don't need to think, oh, she's my wife, she stay with me, and if I not take care, she, she stay with me because she's my wife. I don't need to give flower, I don't need to take care, she... I don't need to say sweet words for she. She don't mean she might buy. Have I not made any effort? Have I not tried? I think it's a double effort. It's uh, teamwork. I always feel a little bit sad for Julia when they have these kinds of talks. Like, she's not even dropping hints. She's saying straight up exactly what she wants out of the relationship and he still just doesn't really seem to understand. She's not even asking for much, is she? You can tell all she wants is just a little bit of reassurance, and for Brandon to just show her that he loves her and wants to take care of her, and he just never steps up to it. What? Nothing. I love you. Hello. You'll never be sad after tomorrow. This is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crying? <laughs> so cute. <laughs> because when you are sad, say words like this. I forget when you say like this. It's nice to see Julia happy, but the fact that she reacts like this when he does the absolute bare minimum and gives her a crumb of reassurance is kind of messed up, isn't it? Like he starved her of attention so much that when he finally gives it to her, it's all she can focus on. Despite none of the issues she's raised being fixed, or even any commitment from him that he's at least gonna work on them. It's very important here when Brandon say he won't marry me, he loved me because I'm person, I have emoji, and when he stopped telling me this, I feel like something wrong, something not not nice. Why he stopped telling me this? And if you tell me this every second, I'm fine. I never started hear this. I love you. No, it's just too much. <laughs> as much power as Brandon has over Julia, she definitely wears the jeans in the relationship, doesn't she? She has them on strings like 99% of the time. And I think it's at least reassuring to know that if he doesn't end up treating her well, she genuinely will just walk away from him. Thankfully, the pair made it to their wedding day without Brandon messing things up. It was definitely far from Julia's dream wedding, like she didn't get the dress she wanted and had to opt for a cheaper one, she had to do her own hair and makeup, 
And she even had to arrange her own bouquet of flowers. But despite all that, her dream of getting married was finally about to come true. We only have two hours and 15 minutes of freedom. I have two other. Two hours and 15 minutes of freedom. Being single. He means before we actually get married. <laughs> oh my God, I'm all drinking. <laughs> I got my funeral and uh, and wedding uh, suit Ooh, out. <laughs> Which one is it today? Today's the wedding. <laughs> Please let's not get that mixed up. You, who, you, who you ask? The whole I hate my wife and marriage is like a jail sentence is such boomer humour and I've never understood it. There is literally an entire subreddit called r slash boomer humour and it is literally filled with comics written by guys who evidently hate or at least strongly resent their wives and it is actually insane. Like this, literally 20 hours ago, titled Wife Bad Funny. This is the pig I have sex with when you have a headache. That's a sheep. I'm talking to the fucking sheep. Like. The entire punchline is just, I hate my wife and don't enjoy having sex with her. How sad is that? How are you feeling? Pretty great. How are oh, you? Oh, you know, let me help you with that. Come here. It's a little bit. Oh my God, can you believe it? Today's your big day. There's a lot to do before the actual wedding. I'm just going with the flow today. I'll let mom take the charge. Some things just can't change. This is actually a whole new level of sad, isn't it? Like, it's one thing to still be a mummy's boy age 27, but to be so disinterested in your own wedding day that you're basically on autopilot, just doing whatever your mum's telling you to do, is actually tragic. Thankfully, he was in good hands, and Betty managed to get herself, Ron, Brandon and Julia to the church on time. And even Grandpa Joe managed to make an appearance. I love how TLC are filming this on proper studio tier HD cameras, and rather than being in the moment, Ron and Betty are on their phones filming it too. Although Julia's parents are watching from Russia, so maybe they've both just got them on FaceTime. Either way, Betty is going full extra behind the camera, and I am here for it. Today we celebrate you, Brandon and Julia, and the commitment that you are making here today. It is truly amazing when two people find one another and wish to dedicate themselves to each other's happiness and well-being as husband and wife. Oh my goodness. You know it's 90 Day Fiancé when the officiant has to remind the husband how to pronounce the wife's name. I can't really laugh at him for that because I've been calling her Julia the whole time too, but what can you do? I guess it was a good way for Brandon to get into the Russian spirit because Julia decided that she wanted them to write their vows in the other person's language. And Brandon was up first to recite his vows in Russian. Julia. Как uh, нани? Повезло. Что я выстрелю тебя? When I him start read Russian, this is my favorite moment. This is make me cry because this is so cute. This is oh my god, this is like I don't explain like cute, 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 cute. <laughs> Nothing says you're marrying a child like hearing him read out loud like a second grader. Honestly, I'm impressed he got through the whole thing without having his mum in the background mouthing the words to him. Although he is a bit of a wet blanket, I'm so glad Julia's having a good time. I know it's far from the wedding that she probably always dreamed of, but she looks so happy to just finally be there. I promise to love you always, to appreciate and respect you. Make protein cookies <laughs> and I'm your support and everything. In any situation, I will be with you. You make me happy. I want to keep uh, our feeling, what we feel now, today, forever. I love you, Brandon, you Russian angel. I love how even in her vows she reinforces the idea that she doesn't want him to stop putting in effort and lose what little enthusiasm he has left for the relationship. Also, I wish I could read Russian to see what her mum's sign says. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if she wrote Get Out Now in Russian so that only Julia could read it. I announce with great joy that you are husband and wife. And Brandon, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> I not believe this is heaven. 
Oh god, it's like the airport scene all over again. Poor Brandon's gonna get papped nursing a semi in the house of God. You know, on a real one, after everything Brandon's put this girl through and after everything she sacrificed for this relationship, I'm actually so happy for her. I genuinely wouldn't have been surprised if Brandon had ruined the wedding somehow, but the little boy has done it. And with a girl out of his league too. Fair play to him. Don't cry! Our little boy's married and that's exciting and uh, we have a new uh, member of our family. It was so sad having the ceremony to an empty church, but you know what? We were there and Pop Pop was there. So this was just the warm up to the full church one day down the road. I think so. Brandon's parents have actually had such a wholesome redemption arc. They started off so controlling and weird, but now they seem to be just so supportive of them both. Like Betty even ended up buying Julia's dress for her. It's just nice to see a wife and a mother-in-law get along for once on this show. In fact, it's nice to see a day where everything goes well and everyone's happy for once. It's such a rarity in these episodes. I mean, I live for the drama on this show, but it's nice to mix it up every now and then. My first grandchild getting married. We're very proud of it. And I'm sure he's going to be a very good husband. Are you happy that your grandson found a pretty wife? Who wouldn't be? Of course. <laughs> I'm very, very, very pleased. I often thought about finding girls for him, but he didn't need to do anything for him because he did it on his own. Oh, good old Grandpa Joe. You know, my biggest regret from this Brandon and Julia series is that they didn't give this guy more screen time. Like, there are so many things I would have loved to hear his opinion on over the course of the season. He's just such a great character. I see my mother crying. I guess my father, like, keep a mojo like be man. I hope next waiting we have Russia for my parents, for my family. I really hope this is a turning point for them, and with the pressure of marriage gone, they can finally get around to just enjoying each other's company. Because this is one of the few couples on this show, that I've covered at least, that I genuinely think have a good shot of living happily ever after together. Brandon definitely still has a lot of maturing to do, and if he keeps acting like a child and taking Julia for granted, there is no doubt in my mind that she's just going to leave him. But I genuinely do think that this could work out, and that they might be right for each other. It's just all down to Brandon. Whether he is going to up his game or get his heart broken, we're just gonna have to wait and find out. That is, unfortunately, all of the Brandon and Julia content from season eight of 90 Day Fiancé. But they're now beginning a new series on season six of 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After. So if you want me to cover that too, just let me know in the comment section down below and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter and other social media will be down below. So feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to make or just say hi in between uploads. I'd also just like to give a very quick shout out to my Patreon supporters for supporting me and the channel over on Patreon. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.